What's up everybody? Welcome back to Diesel Creek. My name's Matt. Behind me, this rusty piece of metal right here is a JLG 40 HA man lift that we picked up, well, 20 months ago, 18 months ago, something like that. It's been, uh, it's been here quite a while. Recently, I started working on this thing. There's been one video previous to this one, and if you haven't seen that, the link is down in the description there. Go check that out. You can see how we got to where we are. Basically, this thing had been sitting for quite some time before I bought it and let it sit some more. But in the last video, I was able to actually get this thing running again, and uh, that was just the beginning of our troubles. There is a ton of electrical issues that we're going to have to address on this thing before we can get it up in the air at all, as well as uh, some more fuel system issues to sort out. We had this thing running just off of a temporary tank last time, so we couldn't run it very long. I have everything... Today, I think we need, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing running off of the correct tanks again. And hopefully by the end of the video, we're gonna put some hydraulic oil in this thing and see if it's actually gonna move up and down or lift the basket at all or anything like that. So that's all I got, let's dig into this thing. All right, so if you went back and watched the previous video as suggested, you'll remember that this fuel pump went bad pretty quick after we started cranking on this engine. So I got on the old interwebs there, found us a replacement, cyanar to that one, hello new one. So, we got us a new fuel pump, got a little o-ring that Joe's down in there, presses up against the block and seals this thing up, and it pushes on a cam in there which pushes this button which runs the pump. So this is our line from the tank, which seems to be in pretty good shape. I'm just going to trim the end of it so we get a nice fresh bite. Had some people asking about this screwdriver in one of the previous videos. It's just a Craftsman, but it uh, converts to a T-handle, which is pretty handy for putting some serious pressure onto something. But it is a Craftsman model 47135. As discussed in the previous video, both of these tanks, the fuel tank and the hydraulic tank, apparently had sight glass tubes on them at one time. That's what these nipples here and here are for, and that would show you the level of whatever fluid was in the tank. At some point before I got this machine, those sight glasses must have decayed and fallen off of there. Yeah, as you can see, there's the remnants down here of this one, and it's just flaking apart. So that meant the tanks drained and they were also slightly open to the elements through these little uh, tits down here. So before we can even mess with these tanks or trying to fill them or anything and run the machine, we need to put new sight glass on there. And uh, I had to hunt pretty hard to find some that was fuel and oil rated so that hopefully that doesn't deteriorate quickly again. Here's a Perfect example, this is a piece of the old sight glass tube, and look at it. Brittle as can be. So, if we got to bother to fix these sight glasses, I would like to retain their usability. It is nice to be able to see your fluid levels at a glance, so I was able to track down some tubing that is supposedly fuel and oil resistant. So, this should be a good replacement. It is not clear, but 
it is clear enough to where you can see the fluid levels. And uh, we got plenty here, so let's put it on. Now, I can appreciate the desired effect here, like, like I said, to see your, your fluid levels. That's great and all. But man, it is uh, actually kind of scary to think about this hose could just crack and break at any time and drain pretty much your whole tank. I mean, there's a little bit below that tit, but not much. So, yeah, gotta got to keep an eye on these things. And if they get brittle in the future, we're going to have to uh, drain the tanks and change them out. But this stuff, like I said, it's rated for it. So hopefully we don't have any problems. This machine's in 1995, so I know it was kind of a different time back then for environmental issues and uh, how much people were kind of concerned about them. But I don't think it was ever good to come to work and have, you know, 30 gallons of diesel or hydraulic just spilled all over your site. I don't, I don't think that was ever in the, in the plans. All right, voila. We've got two new sight glasses there. We're gonna pull the caps off these tanks, have a good look down in there with a flashlight and see what the condition of them is. There is a chance, like I said, since these were open, that the tanks could be contaminated with a little bit of rainwater, but kind of a small target. I, I would doubt that there could be much in there, but uh, we're gonna check anyways. Check out the fuel tank first here. It smells like old diesel. Whew. Let me get a flashlight. Well, I don't know how well you guys can see in there or not. Looking visually, the tank looks nice and clean. The little bit of fuel that's in there, you know, doesn't visually appear to be contaminated. However, if you stick yourself a nice dipstick down in here and kind of pull it across the bottom of the tank, you can feel there's some sludge. And then when you pull the, pull the stick up, definitely some sludge it's not too bad but it's there it looks like it's going to be quite a chore to take this tank off of here and properly clean it out is the unfortunate part so that's the fuel tank let's check out the hydraulic tank Well, the first thing I'm seeing is a little bit of moisture up here. But that could just be from the outside environment getting through the cap. Let's go ahead and pull the top of this filter housing off. Maybe we can see down into the actual tank. Little bit of hydraulic oil coming off of the cap. It looks nice and clean. Filter doesn't look too bad. It's a Napa Gold 1407. Honestly, it looks really good. I don't, I don't even know that I'll replace it. Unfortunately, we still can't see down into the tank though. Only we can do, only thing we can do from here is change the filter, so. We're gonna put the cap back on and we have to take this whole access plate off the top of the tank.
wasn't afraid of that. That one just broke off. I wire wheeled around these, the threads sticking up so that I wouldn't do that, but I still did that. All right, you guys uh, ready to see what's behind door number one here? Oh yeah. Well, good news. Looks pretty darn clean in here. Look at that. That's probably one of the nicest hydraulic tanks I've ever, ever dived into. I think it looks good. I'm going to probe the bottom with a stick just like I did with the fuel tank. Hopefully we don't have any uh, sludge in this tank. You can see we got just a teeny little bit of uh, moisture, I think, that has settled out into the bottom of the tank, but I don't see any like debris or rust or anything like that. It's just a little bit of, teeny little bit of moisture down there in that half inch of oil or whatever. All right, well, with uh, no real good way to pump this thing out, that last little bit of fluid down there, I don't want to send that bit of moisture through the pump or anything. So I built myself an oil scooper and I'm going to attempt to scoop out this oil and dump it into this bucket. Yeah, it's not the worst hydraulic oil I've ever seen, but definitely wouldn't want to be running it through my pump. All right, well, we pulled out almost five gallons of nasty hydraulic oil. Actually, the bulk of the oil really wasn't bad at all. It was just like the bottom 10%, which uh, once you mix it all up, contaminated everything. But I threw down these pig mats here to soak up the last little bit of uh, sludge down there. And I'm going to let those do their thing. Maybe need a couple more. We'll put them in, and then I'll be able to actually wipe this tank completely out with a rag, make sure it's clean, and we're going to start dumping hydraulic oil in there. That bums me out though, this thing's gonna hold a ton of hydraulic oil. I don't have the factory books. I, a bunch of people sent me the manuals, but uh, I don't know how much this thing is supposed to hold, but that's almost five gallons and it wasn't even up into the sight glass. So we gotta come clear up to there. I'm guessing it's probably about 35, 40 gallons. So that's gonna be expensive. Yeah. All right, that hydraulic tank is nice and clean. We're ready to put the top back on and throw some oil in that thing. Got the tank buttoned up. Got to add a whole bunch of hydraulic oil now. All 
Alrighty, so one of the things I realized in the last video was that this thing does have an, uh, an auxiliary power function. So if the engine would die on you while you're way up in the air somewhere, there is a, a small electric motor that'll run the hydraulic pump. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it. It's actually tucked back in there. But basically it runs the hydraulic pump and the intention of that is just supposed to be an emergency so they can get you down out of the air safely. With that function though, we ought to be able to see if this thing's going to respond to any of the controls. I did just put 15 gallons of hydraulic fluid in the tank and that only brought us to here. So we've got quite a ways to go to get up to the full mark. However, that should be plenty for us to see if the pump is actually going to try to grab some of that fluid because the suction foot is only right down here around the orange line. So it should be able to suck up some of that oil and see if it's going to try to respond to any of our commands here. So we got that thing there. Ignition. Hear that? So the pump is running, and it sounds like it might have actually sucked up a little bit of oil because the sound changed there a little bit, if you noticed. The first thing I need to do is uh, swing this thing a little bit. If you guys remember in the first video, the basket was straight with the frame when I loaded it up. However, I had a giant brush pile here at one point, and I was swinging brush out of the way, loading it onto a fire. And some of the brush actually caught the basket and shoved it over that way. And I can't move it back by hand, but it didn't take a whole lot of force to push it over there, I don't think. Just some sticks, basically. So I'm afraid to damage it, trying to force it. May have even damaged it uh, pushing on it with the brush by accident. So let's see if this thing is going to swing back the way we want it to. Nothing yet, but it sounded like one of the solenoids was doing something. Yeah, I can hear the solenoid kicking in and out for the platform rotate. You know what, that's platform rotate. Did we turn the platform? We might have actually turned the platform. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Something actually functions here. So once it purged out all that air out of the hydraulic system, it was able to actually move this platform a little bit. Let's go back the other direction here. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. We're this much closer to have a functional man lift. Anyways, I wanna swing this thing back straight with the frame, A, so I can drain the fuel tank and remove the fuel tank. There's no way to get to the bolts for it right now with it in this position. And also, it's a gloomy, crappy day, and it might start raining at any time. So if it does, I can actually put this thing in the building. Uh, I'll have to drag it over there with the machine. There's no way to use the auxiliary to drive the wheels or anything, but uh, still, I'd be able to get this thing to a place where I could actually work on it. All right, let's bring it around town. Sounds like we might be running out of hydraulic oil. Mm, no, I don't think so. Sometimes it takes a while to run all the bubbles out of a system like this that's been completely drained. That's all it is, guys. We just gotta work the bubbles out of the system. <laughs> Yes! I can't help myself. We gotta see if the boom's gonna go up a little bit or something. The platform's crooked. Let's rotate the platform maybe. Oh! Can you guys even see it? You can't see it. I don't even have the camera turned the right way. I'm totally failing today. Look at that.
Oh guys, that is a major step in the right direction right there. Having that thing swung back into the correct position is gonna make this thing a lot easier to work on. And uh, not only that, it proves that we do have functional controls here. The system is still intact. I'm betting the electrical issues are gonna come when we start getting into the basket box here. But now that we have this thing swung around here, yeah, there we go. There's a drain for the fuel tank right up in there. And I couldn't get to that before. So, let's see if we can't drain this fuel tank out. All right, here's the schmoo. <laughs> well, that was anticlimactic. Yep. Pugh. Well, we got the tank drained. Can you guys see down in there? It's not a real pretty picture. In fact, it kind of looks like there's a big stick down in there, like somebody maybe tried to probe for fuel and drop the stick down in there. I have no idea how I'm gonna get that thing out of there. And there's a bunch of sludge down there. This is, uh, this is gonna be a fun one. Now, I don't believe it myself, but I've managed to actually pick this stick up with a wire here. And I've got a hold of it now with these long, long needle nose. But I can't get it out of the tank. A bit of a delicate operation, as I'm sure the wood is not the strongest. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I got it. That was a pain. That one ought to burn good. Good news. That was the whole stick. Sweet. All right, because I'm way too lazy to take this tank off of here and steam clean it out properly, um, I built up this thing real quick out of a piece of grade stake here. Now, of course, you can't fit this thing down through the hole, but the idea here is pivot this thing, or stick it down through the hole here, and then once it's down in there, I can kind of work it around and kick it so that this thing is a T-shape again, and then I can squeegee all the gunk off the bottom of the tank over to the drain hole. And, um, yeah, hope it works. See that, though? It's working. Well, it took me probably over an hour there, but hopefully you guys can tell. I actually got this tank pretty clean doing my little squeegee method there. Then I'd blow it around with a compressor, rinse it with a little bit of fuel. I think I probably went through about two gallons of fuel and I just kept 
rinsing it and squeegeeing it and blowing it around and squeegeeing it and rinsing it and blowing it around. And now the fuel tank's clean enough to where I don't feel like we're gonna clog the fuel filter in the first five minutes. So yeah, we're gonna send it. I believe that means it's time for some fuel in the tank. I love old school fuel cans that actually have the vent on them still because you can actually pour them. I get so frustrated with all the new cans. Anytime I come across an old school can with a vent on it, I snatch that baby up. I got a whole collection of them. Oh, coming up into the sight glass now. Yeah, these things are nice, but if, the, uh, if they deteriorate, not so good. All right, got us up to right there on the old sight glass. That should be plenty. We can prime up this fuel system correctly now and get this thing to run off of its own fuel tank. All right, so back on the engine side here, I ended up pulling a new fuel line from the fuel tank over to our lift pump here because when I was messing with the fuel tank over there, I saw it was kind of cracked up. So here's the old fuel line. All I did was tape the new one to the old one and pull it through. Uh, it was kind of a pain, but was able to get it done pretty easily. Got that cinched up on there. So the fuel line is completely empty. We don't have to worry about any crap in that old fuel line. I'm gonna loosen up this bleeder screw here and we should be able to start cranking the engine over and let that fuel pump do its thing. And we should be pushing up through the filter and getting this thing primed up. You guys ready? Contact. Huh. Look at that. That thing started up pretty easy. And that was just with whatever fuel was left in there from the last time we ran it. I have not messed with this thing in a couple weeks, really. Anyway, we got to keep cranking it though until we get some fuel coming out over here. Seems like our starter issue didn't magically go away. I don't know that it's actually a starter issue. It almost seems like the way the engine's trying to fire, it like it catches just enough to kick the starter out, but then it stalls out again. So I think once we have this thing actually fuel prime through it and it's reliably starting every time, I don't think we're gonna have a starter issue. So I just quick short trips on the starter button seems to be the best. Like the moment that we got the fuel system to bleed, this thing just takes right off. That's awesome. I was not planning on it actually starting yet. Alright, so I'm actually going to let that thing run for a little bit here, let uh, all the oil get good and hot, and then we're going to go ahead and do a complete service on it. I got a fuel filter, an oil filter, and some fresh oil there. We're going to go ahead and get this thing spruced up and running right. 
Well, I had to hurry up and shut this thing down because somebody added this aftermarket oil pressure line here and the plastic hose that feeds it, which is pressurized, has a big rupture in it right there. So it was dumping engine oil inside of there and I couldn't really tell until it started flowing out the side of the machine here. I think the way this is designed though, I can just cut out the bad spot and reattach it. There we go. I'll just take that ferrule off the end there, slide the nut back past the bad spot. All right, we should be able to just reinstall this thing, tighten it down and have an accurate oil pressure reading. All right, we've got that line screwed back on there. Let's see, uh, see what happens this time. Contact. Got good oil pressure. All right, I can't help myself. Real quickly, I'm just gonna see if the basket's gonna go up and down or anything. out of the gate we got hydraulic oil squirting everywhere up there that's not good all righty well unfortunately we got something malfunctioning up here on the boom when I tried to lift the boom and uh, yeah I think I discovered maybe some other electrical issues as well but First things first, the engine is good and heated up now. We've run it long enough, so let's go ahead and get a complete service going on for this thing. I love when equipment has these convenient little drain hoses here, so you don't even have to undo a bolt. You can just crack this valve loose right here, maybe. There we go. There was a safety detent that I didn't see. Beautiful. And the hose is clogged up with a mud dauber nest, so I gotta poke that out. Of course, that doesn't go far enough. Oh, yeah, it does. And voila, we've got oil. At this rate, I suppose that's gonna take quite a while to drain. These stinking stink bugs keep coming out of everywhere. That one flew right at my face. I thought it was a wasp. All right, that took forever, but we have our oil drained. We'll pull off this oil filter. Oh yeah, of course she's just gonna be a mess. What is this? All right, well, you guys have seen me rescue a lot of old, broken down equipment. And the thing about doing that is you never know how engines were taken care of, what kind of uh, oil they had in them previous, if everybody was running good stuff or junk or whatever. But that's why you guys always see me using Shell Rotella here. And that's because I, I want to take care of this stuff. I put so much time and effort and energy and money into reviving this stuff that I sure don't want the, its cause of failure to be because I cheaped out on the oil. So I go with the good stuff. I'm running Rotella T5 and just about everything now. And I like this stuff because it's semi-synthetic. It has the best of both worlds. This stuff is uh, 
So it's a synthetic blend. It's supposed to be better. It flows better in lower temperatures. It's supposed to increase your time between oil changes, so your service intervals. T5 has got advanced oil technology that helps protect against wear and deposits and oil breakdown. Plus it's got better draining capabilities uh, for better flow and low temperatures. Let's get this oil filter primed up here. Check our oil level again. This thing's starting up nice and easy now. Got good fuel pressure. Oof. Looks like we're a little over full. I can't see how that's going to hurt anything though. Last thing we got to do to service this thing up. Oh. I need to get that fuel filter off there, but she's on there. Well, that fuel filter actually didn't look too crusty, but we'll change it out anyway. Alright, so I got the bleeder loose again here. Should be able to fire this thing up and it'll prime up real quick. Oh boy. Well, that's interesting. This wiring's smoking a little bit. Check this out. I thought I was smelling diesel while this thing was running, like raw, unburnt diesel. So I'm taking a look around here, and you see this is all wet back here. Yep, that's diesel. All wet back in there and everything. So I'm looking around. See that line right there with duct tape on it? Duct tape. That is the fuel return line. And she appears to be Potentially patched up with duct tape. <laughs> so yeah, we better better do some fixing on that, I think. Also, we've got smoke and wires. You guys see that? Look at that. Oh yeah, I don't know what the heck that thing is, but it gets nice and hot. Maybe some sort of resistor or something. Why it's down here just looped into a line like that, I'm not sure. Oh, and I just broke it, so there goes that. 
right. All right, so I'm just loosely tapping this thing to get this center pin moving again. And what these are, are the hub disconnects. In the first video, when I drug this thing out of that field, I had to take these caps off, flip them over, and what that does is it shoves this button into this pin, which disengages the drive hub so that you can actually tow this thing. So, yeah, we'll flip these back over, and we'll see if this thing isn't gonna be able to drive. All right, so I already did the other three hubs. Now we should be able to fire this thing up and see if it's gonna move. Well, we're up here in the basket now, and the control's up here in a sad, sad state. I, I don't even really know what everything does. I can kind of see some of this stuff. I think this is our main boom up and down, but as you can see, it's seen better days. This is the bridge or whatever they call it. I don't know the name. This is our drive forward and backwards. This is our swing. But see, all these switches up here, these levers, they have this pull thing, so you'd have to pull this collar to let the lever go back and forth. But they're all stuck, and I've been soaking them down with penetrating oil for quite a while, but you can see like this one here, it's got like a plastic liner that's rusted and blown apart on it, so I don't know if we're going to be able to get any of these to work, but this one here is free. So, yeah. We're going to try a little bit of everything here. Now we can't do the steering because in the first video I had to disconnect a line um, to, to get the thing to steer up onto the trailer and that line is busted. So I still got to replace that fitting that's broken there. This, this is the telescope. Let's see if this thing works. This should uh, run the orange boom section out of the white boom section. So I don't know if you guys can hear it. But that's running that switch, it's laboring the engine, but nothing's happening. Woo! All right, and e-stop. <laughs> Did you guys see what has happened in there? I didn't touch the swing. I was running this thing back and forth, and then all of a sudden, we started swinging. <laughs> Now, luckily, nothing's in the way here. We're not going to swing into anything. But uh, the e-stop works, so that's good. I wasn't even for sure if the e-stop was going to work. And if the e-stop didn't work, I'd have to scramble down out of this basket, not get killed, and then run over and hit the stop before we swung around and hit on a, hit the roller over there. So e-stop's back out. Let's see if the engine start function actually works from up here. It's one of these buttons here, I'd imagine. It's a negative. Ghost Rider. Dang it. That's our emergency hydraulic power. High and low idle here. I don't have that connected right now either. I have no idea what that thing does. And I don't know what that thing does. Interesting. I'm going to jump down and restart this thing and hopefully it doesn't start swinging again.
I'm not doing that. We've got problems here. I don't know what the deal with that is. Hey, look, it quit. Good. All right, so this thing just swung 90 degrees on me again here. I didn't do any of that, but it did it on its own. Yep, that seat, ghost controls again. I'm not doing any of this. And we're gonna have to east off here in a second because we're gonna run into something. Let's see if we can walk this thing forward. <laughs> Look at that. This thing actually drives. That's a good sign. We're going to have to get this thing out into an open area so that we can play around with this thing and it's going to be able to swing and do everything it needs to do without uh, killing us or swinging into something. But yeah, we just drove forward a machine length here, but I don't like the precarious position my truck's in right now. I don't want to swing into anything. So I think we're going to be uh, done here for today. <laughs> So I think we have it in high speed travel, and I gotta look up the diagram and see which switch does what up here because uh, we don't need high speed travel right now. We want low speed for sure. <laughs> I can see we're going to have a pile of electrical work to do here, but uh, I think the whole project as a whole is, is sound. It's going to be worth the investment. Before I dare climb out of this basket, I'm going to e-stop it so that way I don't climb down and the things start taking off on me because the controls have ghosts in them right now. Ugh. All right. I'm really happy with uh, that result. Well, I'm, I'm happy and sad. I'm happy that the thing will actually run and drive and somewhat operate, but I'm sad because there's going to be a lot of electrical issues that we're going to have to address here. Those mice really made a nest inside of that control panel, and the one up on the boom, I haven't even shown you that, but when we get into that, you're going to see that's an absolute disaster in there. So I think I'm going to end this video here. I think it's getting pretty long, but we address some things, we fix some things, we proved that this thing is going to run and operate for us, so it's a, it's a sound machine, we can uh, work with this. So I think the rest of our problems are pretty much electrical, I know we have a hydraulic issue up there, we got some leaking, uh, I don't know what that thing is, there's some sort of a valve body up here on the boom that's leaking, we're going to have to take that apart and figure out why that's leaking, um, there's probably a couple hydraulic hoses, and yeah, other than that, I think this thing is coming along. So guys, do me a big favor. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button down below. I get hundreds of thousands of views on every video and it seems like my likes are only in like the 50,000 area. So if you guys really help the channel out, if you hit that thumbs up button, it's super easy. It's only just one click and uh, it would mean a lot to me. If you really like the channel and you want to help support it, you can head on over to dieselcreek.com. The link is down below in the description. We've got some new fall merchandise that's just coming into the store over there. We've got hats, pocket t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, beanie caps, all that, and more over at the store, dieselcreek.com. You'll be helping to keep me doing what I'm doing here for you guys, and uh, you'll be looking good while you're doing it. So we definitely have our work cut out for us here in the next video, but I'm sure with a little bit of perseverance and some elbow grease and uh, probably some off-camera cussing, <laughs> we can get this thing fixed up, and uh, we'll be using it here in the new shop in no time. So... As always guys, thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one.